Hey people, Epabot here. Halloween is almost here and the developers are updating their games to fit the time of the year. When I think of Halloween, the first thing that comes to my mind is scaring people. And the best way to scare people in your game is of course the good old jump scare. So in this video, I will show you how to make one. So let's begin. So what kind of model are we going to make? Well, the basic idea is that whenever a player touches a part, jumpscare will appear, sound and animation will play, and after a few seconds the jumpscare will be gone. Okay, so first let's make the UI. Just add a screen GUI inside the starter GUI, and inside the screen GUI add an image label. This image will be the actual jumpscare, so we have to make it as spooky as possible. You can of course choose whatever picture you like, but I'm going to use this one. Yeah, you might be wondering, what in the world is that? I wish I knew, but it is in fact the scariest picture I can find on my inventory, so I'm going to use that one. Anyways, moving on. Now you can change the size and position of the picture to make it look all good, kinda like this. Next, we add a sound inside the screen GUI. This is of course going to be the sound that plays when the jump scare happens. I found this jump scare sound effect, so I'm going to use this one. If you want to use the same sound, there is a link in the description down below. To finish the GUI, we add a local script inside the screen GUI. However, before we do anything with it, let's do some other things we need to do to make sure that everything works. Next, add a remote event inside replicated storage and name it Jumpscare. Next, we are going to create the part that the player is going to touch to activate the Jumpscare. There's nothing too amazing about it, just to make sure to change the transparency to 1 to make it invisible. Now, add a script inside the part, open it and type the following code. Let me explain what it does. Basically, it's a function that plays whenever a player touches the jump scare. Part right here is the body part of the player that touches the jump scare. Next, we check if there's a humanoid inside the part's parent, which means it's a player, and if there is, we find out who the player is using getPlayerFromCharacter function. And finally, we fire the remote event to the player's client. Now finally, let's go back to screen GUI, open local script and type the following code. Once again, let me explain what it does. This time we detect when the remote event has been fired to our client. When it happens, we turn the image label visible, play the sound and twin the size of the image. After 2 seconds, we turn the image invisible and change the size back to normal, in case the jumpscare will appear again. And after another second, we can use the jumpscare again. We also have this bool variable to add a bit of a cooldown, simply to avoid glitches like this. And there we go, we are all done! If you want this entire model, including the code, just click the link down below, edit the place and open jumpscare folder, everything you need is inside of it. Thank you for watching this video, if you like my content, leave a like, comment, subscribe and turn post notifications on so you don't miss a single video. Also, make sure to check out my other videos, I'm sure you will enjoy them as well. Thank you for watching and as always, have a nice day, take care.